Daryl, thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me. Um, can we start off by just covering what you've been up to lately? Sure, thank you uh, for the interview, Guy. Uh, what have I been up to lately? Well, uh, we've been doing some really, had some really exciting opportunities in our company. Um, we've been uh, working with a large training company, of all things, uh, who wanted to really up their level of instructional design. This is Learning Tree International, and they're on the stock market, quite a large training group. Uh, they, uh, in talking with the CEO, he wanted to boost the design of their management program so high that it would give them a competitive edge. Now they're all instructor-led training, uh, and these are three to four day long courses. So we put together a team, did an experimental uh, project, a pilot project for which we even went ahead and evaluated it, transfer evaluation, payoff, and all that sort of thing. And in fact, it won an ISPI award. But uh, what's been really exciting about that for ourselves and kind of awakening <laughs> was that we had gotten into everybody wanting things so efficient, so short, so cost effective that you begin to dumb down the design some. And it was really a wonderful experience to turn around, sort of get a slap in the face and say, be as creative as you can possibly be. <laughs> and so we had full course simulations, we had rich media, all of these kinds of things, and what was wonderful is it really did pay off for them, and they got uh, some terrific results. Excellent. So that's probably the most important thing. To me. What, uh, as a as a, as a longtime business owner um, in this field, uh, have you been working on any new products and services besides that particular project you just uh, told us about? But uh, mm -hmm. uh, what are you doing with your own product and service line? Uh, well, it, it is changing, uh, primarily because public workshops, which was a way that we marketed our workshop products, uh, has, has just changed. That business has changed. It's very difficult, uh, even more so in these economies. Uh, but uh, uh, it, uh, what we're changing to is to getting more of that uh, in some sort of web-based instructional format. Uh, that seems to be working for us. Uh, it is uh, a bit of a struggle to get it uh, created in that, uh, that format. And also, another thing that's kind of tough is figuring out the financial model for that. How do you actually make money once you uh, deliver something in that, uh, in that way? Uh, so uh, we're beginning to figure that out. We have some pilot programs going on that way that seem to be successful. And so I think it, it will fit our business model and yet be able to reach out and, uh, uh, with our products and services uh, to people so that they can actually take them and not have to get on an airplane and fly someplace to do Thank you. As a longtime member of the society, I know that you've been in many volunteer positions, uh, served on many task forces and committees, you've been a member of the board of directors. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your history with the society? Sure. Um, I got started as a student at Indiana University, um, and um, I was uh, working with uh, Tiagi some. Uh, he was out at the Center for the Development of Teacher Training Materials for Teachers of the Handicap uh, there in Bloomington, Indiana, and got acquainted with him. I uh, took a couple of workshops with him and learned about ISPI through Tiagi. Um, so I, while still in graduate school, I went to a conference in Dallas, Texas. And uh, that's kind of how I got started, and I believe I've only missed one conference out of 32 or something like that uh, since I started. Uh, so it's been my professional organization, my place to go and get uh, professional development for myself, as well as others. Uh, people have worked for me, uh, brought in other people, uh, to, including clients a lot, uh, to uh, ISPI, and uh, so it's just been a wonderful organization for me. Uh, so, um, and uh, you know, over time, then what's happened is I was finally on the board uh, and uh, served on the board during some pretty rough financial times. Was able to help with that as vice president of finance, and um, uh, also uh, have uh, worked on a couple of the chapters in the handbook for human performance technology, which was a professional growth piece for me, as well as hopefully it made a contribution to the society. Thank you. Uh, one of the objectives of this legacy series of videotape interviews is to capture some memories or stories of uh, our members, uh, probably going back into the uh, past, 
uh, or the present, but uh, who could you speak to that's had any kind of a significant influence on you and or any personal stories about them and their character or them as a character? Right. right. Okay. Uh, well, uh, certainly I mentioned Tiagi, uh, but uh, along with Tiagi, one of his students was Harold Stolovich, and he became a, a, a quite a mentor to me. Uh, in the early days uh, that I was in ISPI, very in, he was very involved in ISPI. That encouraged me to be even more involved in ISPI. And so I think Harold is uh, someone that, uh, Harold Stolovich is someone that uh, influenced uh, me in my career. I loved his practical approaches to things, his enthusiasm, uh, his encouragement, and we even worked together a lot in the beginning parts of my company. Uh, and uh, uh, he uh, has been uh, quite a shining light uh, for me throughout the, the years, and he continues to be that. Anything in particular that uh, you learned from him that uh, you can give him credit for now? <laughs> uh, well, lots. Uh, uh, I, I would say the practical approach of, uh, of uh, teaching people through our workshops. He and I used to present together sometimes at ISPI in the early days. In fact, we. We developed a, a couple workshops together. We gave us pre-conference workshops. And maybe a funny little story is that uh, one of the ways we would generate enthusiasm for ourselves is before the workshop, we'd close the doors before anybody got in there, running around screaming, yelling, getting <laughs> our own energy levels up, and all of that sort of thing. So uh, we've always had a lot of fun with, uh, with that. We roomed together in the early days when we were uh, both very poor, <laughs> and uh, so we would come to the conference and room together to share share rooms, and so we had a lot of fun in putting the workshops on and uh, getting acquainted that way. I know that uh, several other members, probably many members, uh, have worked for you in delivering some of your workshops, and so I know that Mickey Lane is somebody that you've worked with closely in the past, and Jeannie Farrington, and uh, tell, tell us a little bit about your experiences with the two of them. Sure. Um, yes, Mickey. Uh, Mickey, uh, I saw him present at the first conference he came to in uh, San Antonio. So I guess that's 25 years, or about 23 years ago, um, when uh, uh, ISPI was 25 years old. And uh, uh, and when I saw Mickey present, um, I said, "Gee, I'll bet you he could do our workshops quite well." So I invited him to do that, and he uh, still continues uh, uh, to do our workshops once in a while. Uh, Jeannie uh, actually uh, uh, got her start in this whole field uh, with our company. Um, uh, her cousin actually worked for me as a secretary, and we were looking for an editor. And I asked uh, Paul Foyker, is his name, I asked Paul if he knew anybody that was a great editor. And he said, well, I don't know anybody that's a better editor than my cousin. So I met her, she had an undergraduate in English and she would got an editing certificate and so she certainly was qualified to do that. We had a great project, she had never heard of the deal. And so she was introduced to it through us and, and I hired her on the condition that she would start working on her master's degree, <laughs> and she, which she was uh, very excited to do anyway. We were in San Jose, so she went to San Jose State. Later she uh, worked. Uh, worked, she worked for us for three and a half years, and then she worked, got a job with Sun Microsystems, later Hewlett Packard, and during that time she finished her doctorate degree at USC under Richard Clark, who's another well-known person in ISPI, and um, is now past president of uh, ISPI. Uh, so she's uh, kind of a, a shining uh, spot or star that maybe I helped to get started a little bit. It's one of the respond uh, thoughts I have of ISPI and Brave Somebody Do It. Excellent. Well, thank you for doing that for the Society. Uh, are there any other members, uh, stories, uh, experiences that you've had in the past that you could share with us? Oh, gosh. Uh, lots of them. That's for, for sure. A lot, for sure. A lot of our, were conversations that we had. Um, uh, that maybe doesn't occur quite so much today, but lots of side conversations at the conference and sort of thing, being able to talk with and become friends with Robert Mager, uh, Joe Harless. Uh, um, I sent many of our people uh, to Joe Harless's workshops because even if they came out of a formal program in instructional design, they didn't necessarily know how to do job aids. And uh, so that was always a part of their professional development was to go to his his workshops and so hanging out with those kinds of people, uh, Don Toasty, uh, learning from them uh, on the side, shall we say, and also going to their presentations 
and we still stay in touch. Uh, uh, my wife and I have been down to see Robert Mager at his home in Carefree, Arizona, and his wife, uh, Elaine uh, Mager. And uh, so uh, I think some of that, the networking, the side line conversations have been great. Uh, speaking of the networking and such, what would you say to people who might consider uh, becoming a volunteer at ISPI? What's, what's the value proposition? What's in it for them from your perspective? That's probably the biggest thing. It's like many things, the more you give, the more you get out of something. Um, but I think that, that uh, it, it, it then, then you really get to know the people that you're working with. Um, uh, and that just spreads that network. They know people pretty soon you're introduced. Uh, you begin to feel more a part of the whole organization and it becomes your organization uh, and your family, if you will, your professional family. Uh, and uh, so I, I would really encourage it um, and uh, uh, don't know anybody that has benefited from that. It's a real hallmark actually of ISPI is the volunteer organizations. We just heard in the business meeting about how many people, what percentages, it's a very high percentage of our association are volunteers. And so I would encourage anybody that's uh, new or not even so new <laughs> to get even more involved in volunteer. Thank you, Daryl, for agreeing to be participating in this uh, video interview. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you, Guy.